Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy. Few things are guaranteed in life, but one of them is the continued updates of these mouse and mouse pad tier lists. So that's what this is going to be. There's like over 85 pads, something absurd. Um, and we do have two new tiers the He and Clone and the Esport Tiger tier. This is just going to help, like, get some pads out of the way you know like this is a lot unironically so i will appreciate if this video gets 85 likes and i get 85 new subscribers that would mean the world to me but yeah i'm just gonna get right into it um first off is the razor akari i'm gonna th it kind of just has to go in the dog shit tier it's a pretty small plastic hard pad and it's like you just really shouldn't be buying one i did do a review at one point and it wasn't good if you want to check it out rocket jump ninja's mouse pad the extra five gpz1 again this is like a it's a control pad i would say it's actually on the mud pad side it's slow in terms of both dynamic and static friction it's a decent pad quality wise i do think it changes a bit in humidity and temperature so it's nothing i would recommend buying especially at the 35 dollar price point it's at when you could get something like a lethal gaming gear saturn but it's not a terrible unusable mouse pad next up is going to be the x-ray pad aqua control plus aqua control 2 just basically all of their textured polyester pads these are the standard surface for a lot of other um, desk pads as well and the way it works is if you get an aqua control plus with a design on it it's going to be a bit smoother and more controlled than the straight black option if you're looking for the fastest lowest friction version which is in my opinion the best go with like a black aqua control 2 or something and i will throw it in the seal of approval tier with the other versions it's really just splitting hairs you can get any one and the performance will be more or less the same i'm just going to throw them in the he end tier to not over clutter the seal of approval tier but they're all good pads there's no variance in the like stitched edge and rubber base between the different pads anymore up next is the bone pad this is dog shit it was pretty grossly overpriced when it was produced and yeah i don't think they produce it anymore it was a mud pad it did not perform well and yeah that's really all i gotta say about it. rip the bone pad next up is the sarah pad i'm gonna throw this in the c tier it could be like low b tier it was honestly one of the hard pads i just did not have a good experience with it was basically impossible to use without a sleeve my arm would just get stuck on it um and it just was nothing compared to the sarah pad kin which i'm going to put in the a tier which is basically just an updated version of the surface if you don't know what the sarah pad is it's a ceramic coated glass mouse pad so it's gonna have all of the properties of a glass mouse pad but the ceramic coating in theory adds a bit more control these are still not like super control focused pads by any means but the serapad kin is just a far better experience than the original serapad it also did not get dirty as quick um, so yeah if you watch my two reviews it's like to two totally different products even though the only thing that changed is the coating next up is the decanic control another pad that's just not being produced anymore they used to use the same surface as the mouse pad company mouse pads but eventually they just stopped producing mouse pads i don't know what really happened to the company the x-ray pad equate plus i'm going to throw this in the c tier the x-ray pad equate and the equate plus are just not um, top tier pads in my opinion they're very slow and they just have like a rough gritty texture it's just nothing worth buying if you want a control pad just get a cloth pad in my opinion next up the glorious fire this is going to go in the he and clone tier quite literally the exact same surface from the same manufacturer as the fanatic dash and these are not bad pads they're just um worse versions of the artisan he and basically and for the price they're at which is i believe like around 30 dollars each the fire might be a bit cheaper um it's just not worth buying next up the razor gigantis v2 this is a pad that's kind of like a slightly more modernized qck where it's not going to be um, a really good performer it's not going to be extremely durable but it is going to be a cheap cloth mouse pad that you can get anywhere across the world and there is some value in that it's nothing that i would ever consider an end game or like a main mouse pad but it will get the job done if you are on a budget and don't have any options available um, now the padsmith first war i'm going to throw this in the s tier padsmith pads were actually really surprising because it's a small company but the performance of the pads is really solid the stitching and the rubber base are extremely good it does does use a pour on foam i believe so it has an x soft squishy feeling and the surface is pretty much an aqua control too as far as i can tell um, but yeah overall for 35 dollars with the sick design the first war is like a really solid pad the other pad from padsmith the temple of dreams i was just not a big fan of i'm gonna put it in the c tier it's just a very weird hard to describe feeling control pad it's like a waxy coating almost i will make a review of it this is one of the few pads i actually haven't reviewed but it's just really weird there's another pad coming out um, called the smooth criminal using basically the same surface so i don't know i'm just not a fan of that control surface 
But I still wouldn't say it is a dog shit pad, like overall experience wise. It's just going to come down to if you like the texture. Um, the extra five GP4, I'm going to throw this in the A tier. It's a solid control pad. I don't like how tightly it is rolled up. There are generally issues with it lying flat and it just doesn't have the best feeling base. Also for a cloth pad, the texture is pretty rough and gritty. I would say it's more rough than something like an Artisan Zero. And there is going to be some noticeable inconsistencies between the X and the Y axis. Um, but yeah, all around, it's not a bad control pad. They did make a GP5, which is only available in desk mat sizes. I didn't try that, um, but I don't know. I would presume it's around the same, maybe a bit better in the GP4. Now we have the GSRSE, the GSRSE Rouge. The GSRSE Rouge, I don't know, it's like high A tier, it could be low S tier. This is essentially the GSRSE, um, but two years later, or however long it's been, they decided to give it an update and make it so it is not total shit in terms of consistency and like ability to resist humidity. So is there really like a two tier difference between the pads? I would say long term potentially i don't know man it's it's the updated version it's slightly better it's slightly faster and lower static friction as well if you're looking for a gsrse go with the rouge version is all i have to say and the vax epa um, i'll throw it in the a tier as well it is 90 percent the same pad as the gsrse rouge like the same thickness using the same base like in a blind test i don't think many people would be able to distinguish between the surfaces and it's available in a few more designs so it's a solid control pad it's just nothing that's gonna last you really that long so i would say i prefer the gsrse rouge but um both of the pads just don't come in especially large sizes next up is the ikea pad this is a surprising mouse pad i'm gonna throw it in the a tier it's not the highest quality it's not the largest pad but it's ten dollars oh you can't get a better pod for a tenner um it's it's unreal just watch my review of it it's basically a ten dollar budget artisan zero i don't know how the long-term consistency is but worst case scenario just buy three and i presume that would last you a year minimum and that is only thirty dollars so if you have an ikea nearby just fucking get one just trust me and get an ikea pad um glorious helios not much to explain here plastic mouse pad made by glorious subsequently dog shit and now is my favorite part of the mouse pad tier list i get to shill artisan mouse pads i feel like that is what i was put on this earth to do and we have the artisan he and the absolute goat mouse pad i still have my copy that is coming up on three years old at this point i'm sure there are some people who have had children who are watching this video that are younger than my artisan he and, and that thing is still kicking it um, so really just only good things to say about the he and if you are looking for a fast textured low friction pad It's just the pad to try if you don't like it something's wrong with you if you like it just stick with it It's the goat mouse pad um, artisan zero kind of everything I said about the he and but just a standard cloth pad It is the ultimate version of the standard cloth pad honestly nowadays with the lethal gaming gear Saturn pro There is like you can say that the Saturn is on the same level if not higher than the zero because it is available in larger sizes and does not have the hair issue um, but the zero is really the og it is it's the goat control pad and the saturn pro is a very similar feeling in terms of texture and just like response but it is going to be available in only an x soft foam variant while with artisan you can of course choose and it is available in a 500 by 500 size while artisan max size is 490 by 420 so yeah lots of minor differences if you're really interested i recommend watching my saturn pro review because i do a pretty in-depth comparison but you can't go wrong with either um, next up is the artisan raiden and they actually made a new updated version that is going to go in the seal of approval tier previously i think i put in the s tier um, because it did have the potential spin out issue albeit it was pretty minor especially with the better high-end modern sensors um, but the new raiden has a tighter weave more or less the same glide experience it does seem to be a bit more controlled but it seems to not lose the speed in the way that the old raiden did so if you are looking Looking for a smooth fast high quality pad um, I think the Raiden's the best on the market because it still does have the silky smooth texture even with the updated weave um, no spin out issue and it does seem to have better consistency in my testing so I've been really surprised by the new Raiden I didn't make a video I have to make an updated artisan pad video that's on me but I'm putting you guys onto the sauce now if you're looking for it go for it um, the Shidinkai is no longer being produced it is just completely discontinued I don't know if artisan plans to replace it in the future but as of now your shidinkai is worth its weight in gold like I there's no way to get them so if you have an unopened shidinkai fucking jack that price up on eBay just kidding or do it I don't know 
Next up is the new Hayate O2, and it's a very solid pad going to go in the seal of approval tier. It's a textured pad, but it's not as abrasive on your skin as something like the Hi, and it still does have a lot of textured feedback on your mouse skates, and it's not a smooth pad by any means, uh, but it's a bit more controlled and just not as rough as the Hien. I don't want to call it like a Hien light because it is very much so its own thing, and it's also an artisan pad that is really good regardless of the foam option you get. Like, for example, with the Hien, I would recommend getting either a soft or a mid. Um, with the Zero, I would recommend either a soft or an X soft, but with the Hayate Otsu, you can get any option, and it's going to be a really good experience. Um, the X soft options are really interesting if you want a squishy textured pad that's going to play like a control pad um, but still have low static friction so yeah I, honestly I, I could give you the whole spiel but like all artisan pads it's extremely high quality very solid surface really nothing to complain about it comes in a red and a black color and the old Hayate Otsu um, not being produced anymore so it's just going to go in the dog shit tier the Vax EPB this is a very surprising case because I gave it the seal of approval but after I posted my review they stopped producing it. They were like, we're permanently discontinuing the Vax EPB. So it's very interesting. I The reason they discontinued it is because of it not laying flat on the edges and they just like didn't have a solution. So they said, fuck it, we're not gonna produce the pad anymore. Um, so I guess I guess it's gonna go in the not produced anymore tier. Um, and now the Esport Tiger Long Tang Huoyun, first pad going in the Esport Tiger tier. More or less, this is an Aqua Control Plus um, yeah, it's just an eSport Tiger version of the Aqua Control Plus with a dragon design on it, or with a tiger design on it. Fuck me, man. I, I can never get that right. Next up is the Glorious Ice. I'm going to throw this in the dog shit tier. Just not a big fan of any of the just coated fiberglass pads. They just are not... Um, top tier options for gaming in my opinion compared to something like a hybrid textured pad or just a control cloth pad There's tons of issues with inconsistency on the glorious ice and I always get comments people are like Oh, you can just clean the pad off like yes I could spend a good chunk of my day cleaning my mouse pad off or I could just use a mouse pad That's not gonna cause any issues um, Just from fucking resting my hands on it So it's a mouse pad that I just don't like whatsoever next up is the inked gaming pad I'm gonna throw this in the B tier ink gaming pads are sick in that they're cheap and you can get whatever design you want on them. It's like just an OEM cloth pad that is customizable. It's not going to be the best in terms of long-term durability performance wise. I just don't think it's on the same level as an Artisan Zero or something like a Lethal Gaming Gear Saturn, but they are cool, cheap custom pads. Uh, next up is the Lethal Gaming Gear Saturn, just the standard $30 version. I'm going to throw this in the seal of approval tier. In my opinion, the Saturn is just a cut above all of the other $30 cloth pads. One that's close to it is the GameSense Radar, but yeah, the Lethal Gaming Gear Saturn, uh, the difference between the Pro version and the regular version is mainly the base. It, it has a natural rubber base as opposed to a poron base on the Pro version. Um, so it is going to be a bit stiffer, somewhere between Artisan Soft and Mid. It's a thicker pad. Um, it does have the same surface, but it is going to play a bit slower, like the Saturn Pro has a lighter glide. But if you're just looking for a solid control pad and not really breaking the bank, uncoated, going to last a long time, Saturn is my main recommendation. Next up is... The Lethal Gaming Gear Jupiter. This is the definition of a high C tier pad. Uh, personally, not something I like very much at all. It has this melted umbrella fabric texture, and it is arguably the slowest mouse pad on the market in terms of dynamic friction and static friction. It takes a lot to get the mouse moving. It feels like it's stuck to the surface almost, uh, but the speed does vary depending on what type of mouse skates you're using. It is on sale for $15, so if you're looking for a super muddy pad, it's my recommendation, but it's not a pad I would ever use personally. Next up is the Lethal Gaming Gear Mercury. This is going to go in the Hien clone tier, as the name suggests. It's a Hien clone. And since the Hien clone market is so saturated, I don't think this pad really did as well as the other pads. So they put it on a pretty big sale, $15. Um, it's only $30 for a triple XL size. So it's by far the best value Hien clone on the market. It doesn't have quite the same like gritty and abrasive feeling that the Hien does. It's a bit more watered down of a surface, but still a really good pad quality wise. And like I said, $30 for that huge size, you're just not going to find a better deal on a hybrid pad. Um, Lethal Gaming Gear Venus going in the seal of approval tier. I, the Venus has been one of my favorite hybrid pads since it came out. Venus is definitely Lethal Gaming Gear's take on the Hayate Otsu. I'm not going to say it is a clone of the Hayate Otsu though. And funny enough, I actually do prefer the standard version 
to the pro version basically on the standard venus the texture is a bit more abrasive and there's more of a light grazing feeling on your mouse compared to the pro version which is a bit more smoothed out and is only available in the xsoft variant but when lethal gaming gear comes out with a multi-hardness system i do think that the firmer variants of the venus pro will be really good but for now i just don't see it being worth paying 20 dollars more than just the standard 30 dollars venus but yeah, I look at the Venus pretty similar to the Saturn, but for a more speed hybrid pad. If you're looking for a really solid $30 speed pad that is not just a Heian clone, the Venus is definitely what I recommend. I've had mine for a really long time now, no issues with it wearing down, even with a lot of use with glass skates. Um, so the Venus is one of my top recommendations, but the Venus Pro just not really as much. Next up is the Esport Tiger Ling Yun, and this is undeniably an Esport Tiger pad. It's a, what we would consider a hybrid pad, I guess just a lightly textured pad, compares well to the X-Ray Pad Equate. Uh, you can watch my original eSport Tiger Roundup from 2020 if you want more info on it. It's nothing, nothing really special. Next up is the eSport Tiger Long Tang, and this one, it has more of a story. They actually sent me a shirt with the Long Tang design on it, and I just found that really cool. So there's the mouse pad, then there's also the shirt. The designs on the back... You know, and I'll just put this shirt on backwards for the rest of the video. Okay, looking sharp. Make sure to like and subscribe for that. Um, but yeah, the pad itself is just a controlled coated pad. It's not like super affected by humidity, but you're not going to get great long-term durability. It's just, it was a solid control pad. I wouldn't recommend it with the current options, but you know, the fucking shirt, man. Next up is the Linus Tech Tips pad. I got to find out if this is still being produced. Yeah, it looks like it is in like all of the sizes. So... Um, yeah, for the price, $30, literally any size, up to 1200 by 800 millimeters, it's a really good fucking value. Is it a special mouse pad? No, it's just going to be a solid performing control pad. I don't know about the long-term durability, but $30 for those crazy sizes, you can't really say it's a bad pad. Let me get back to the tier list. Where are we going to put it? I feel like it's A tier, honestly, with that reevaluation. It's gone up over the years. Next is the X-Ray Pad Minerva. I'm going to throw this in like could be low B tier. It's just a smooth coated pad from X-Ray Pad. Nothing special, not really great durability. It was their take on the GSRSE and I mean, I guess it's slightly better than that, but I wouldn't really recommend it. Next up is the Mousepad Company Mousepad. This is a very strange like abrasive textured surface, but it's controlled. It, the same thing as the Decanic Control when that was being produced. And I just don't really like it a lot. I feel like for control pads, you don't want something that's like super rough and abrasive, but it is pr pretty popular in Fortnite. The designs are cool. The pricing is not outrageous, um, but yeah, it's just not a pad that I would consider like a top tier recommendation. Next is the Cooler Master MP510. This is pretty mid. The MP511, that has to be somewhere, is definitely a better version, which could be argued into the A tier or the B tier. Um, I just am not a big fan of Cordura pads whatsoever. One of the few ones that I think gets it right is the Endgame Gear MPC 450 and the Sport Tiger Blaze. But in general, just like super abrasive Cordura pads, I just don't think it's worth the trade-off. They do have good properties like long-term durability and like water resistance though. So there is that. Good global availability, not terrible pricing, but just not super great pads. Endgame Gear MPC 450, I've always put this in the seal of approval tier in my opinion. It is a top tier Cordura pad. It does have that jean-like texture, like almost denim feeling, but the consistency of the low static and low dynamic friction on the pad is just unreal. Like there are pads that have good long-term durability and then there's like the MPC 450, which just feels the same no matter what. So yeah, if you're looking for a top tier Cordura speed pad, I would definitely recommend the Endgame Gear MPC series. Obviously the same goes for the larger sizes. I always get questions asking like if the desk mat versions are good, yes. The stitching is not all that great because it is just a Cordura pad that hasn't been updated in the past few years. So you could make a better version, but for the price, it's still a really good speed pad. Then there's the MPX 390, and this is a pretty dumb pad. It was like 60 or $70. It had a silicone base, but it was 390 millimeters, which is just like stupidly small. So it was by no means worth it. It did have a really interesting low static friction, just like Cordura blend, but it was never a pad that really took off. The Esport Tiger Neon another eSport Tiger pad one of their slower pads it's coated just very slow in terms of dynamic friction um, 
that's all I have to say about it. Next up is the Odin Gaming Infinity, and this is one of the better Hien clones without a doubt. It was one of the first ones to really get it right. It just has a natural rubber base, but it had a very good texture compared to some of the original Hien clones. Obviously, it's an uncoated pad, and for $30, it was like the go-to recommendation for a while. Nowadays, I would say for $15, the Mercury is a better buy, but I mean, nothing's wrong with the Infinity if you already have one. Next up is the SteelSeries QCK, and I'm going to throw this in the C tier. I just don't recommend the QCK. It's not a good pad long term. Just get the IKEA pad. If you're on that serious of a budget, just go with the IKEA pad because it'll offer you at least a bit better of a quality experience because you can either get the heavy version which is never going to lay flat and be extremely like muddy when there's temperature variations, or you can get the standard version, which is just a cheap piece of shit. So I, it's really like, I, there's no case where buying a QCK makes the most sense in my opinion. So I'm going to throw it in the C tier, but it's not a dog shit mouse pad. Like it's just a cloth surface. You can obviously perform on it. Um, next up is the King Sui 2 in eSport Tiger mouse pad. This is a really thick one. It had like razor sharp stitched edges that could like cut up your wrist. Um, so that was, that was a mouse pad. I do think they made like a pro updated version maybe. Uh, yeah, they did. The King Sui X, which is also an eSport Tiger pad. I talked about this one in my most recent roundup. And yeah, it's still a thick pad, but it's a slightly faster but still controlled surface. Yeah, the King Sui 2 was like super slow as well. Um, so the King Sui X I had a lot better of an experience with. That was one of the better eSport Tiger pads. And if you're looking for a thick pad, there's nothing wrong with it. Pretty cool design as well. Now the King Sui Zwan, I, I just stopped even trying with these pronunciations, man. This one, that was really mid. It was like one of the slowest pads I had tried. Just not a mouse pad. I have a positive recollection of like most of the 2020 eSport Tiger mouse pads so that's really not a big recommendation now the sky pad I'll put the normal sky pad in the B tier like the sky pad 2.0 because I do think it's a bit better than the Sarah pad but I don't think it's quite as good as the Sarah pad kin um, the sky pad 2.0 just has a pretty frosted glass feeling while the SkyPad 3.0 is a lot smoother. Um, so it really, that comparison makes sense if you have both of them. I would recommend the SkyPad 3.0 though. It's the best hard pad I've used. SkyPad did a collab with AimLab and they sent me out this pad. I've just been putting a lot of time on it recently and I've started to like it a lot. The feeling is very consistent and low friction, but I've just never been able to enjoy glass pads as much as standard pads when it comes to light mice in clicking scenarios so i still haven't gotten used to that but i do think the skypad 3.0 is the best hard pad on the market and yeah obviously all of these hard pads for the large sizes are going to be over a hundred dollars so it's a pretty big investment i feel like a lot of the hard pad love is just people like gaslighting themselves into being okay with their crazy mouse pad purchases but i do know that some people love them and the skypad 3.0 and the serapad can they're pretty solid hard surfaces i'm just like i've never been able like them over artisan pads the sloth mat is not produced anymore this was literally my first ever gaming mouse pad i had this like super brain dead uh galaxy like mouse pad and i could tell like my first day using it, i was like okay this thing's shit and i just wound up getting a sloth mat i don't know why but it wasn't terrible um now the odin gaming zero gravity i would argue that is a pretty terrible mouse pad the way i see it the zero gravity walked so the infinity could run it was basically just a version of the x-ray pad thor but without the coating so it was just this super muddy pad i had the white version it got dirty so easily it just wasn't a great mouse pad next up is the x10 control which is easily the hardest mouse pad to rate in terms of just performance it's like an s tier mouse pad but what you got to factor in is that it's a hundred dollars nearly twice the price of like a saturn pro or an artisan zero and it is just not like it's not worth it <laughs> it's not worth that much more money in my opinion it is a muddier feeling surface it's not as consistent it's not as light of a glide it does have a pour on base and it might stick to your desk like better than an artisan pad does but i just don't think it is all around as premium there's no stitched edges i haven't had an issue with fraying personally but I just feel like it's a price that's really hard to justify. I don't, and I just don't know what tier to put it in. Maybe like 
B tier. I, but it's better than B tier. I don't fucking know. Maybe it's an eSport Tiger Pad. Maybe that. Next up is going to be High Star, which is a TikTok mouse pad company. The only pad of theirs that I actually tried was this really weak Hien clone, but that was a few years ago. And supposedly they've been working on like better, higher quality pads. I just haven't tried them yet though, or I actually don't think they're out. So my only experience with High Star has been pretty bad, but apparently they're releasing some cool shit in the future. Uh, the Hayate Ku, this is like the only artisan, like textured pad that is not in the seal of approval tier i just never understood like what the point of it was the only quirk about it is that the y-axis is faster than the x-axis besides that it's just like a worse hayate otsu so it was always the one artisan pad that i just couldn't really recommend i'll throw out an eight here because it still has the qualities of an artisan pad and if like somebody told you to use it you'd probably perform on it be like okay this is a solid mouse pad but it's just not quite not quite the pinnacle of mouse pads that Artisan tends to be. Um, next up is the Astolfo pad. I still don't understand this. I don't know any anime stuff. I just know that I bought it once for a meme video, and now, now I don't know. It's like one of those things where the ass cheeks were like a wrist rest, and it wasn't a good mouse pad. So there's that. Next up is the Pure Track Talent. I'm going to throw this in the S tier. This is a really OG mouse pad. They've been around for like well over maybe 20 years at this point and just making mouse pads it's a cloth pad that does have a slick feeling to it it is still on the control side but it's like a truly balanced pad it used to be really popular in the quake scene there's no stitched edges it is a thicker pad though and all around like my experience with it when i tried it i was like okay this is a seriously good pad i see why they've been around forever they're newer pads though i haven't tried them i've only tried the tried and true pure track talent next up is the Ferdecki pad this is a clone of the Mad Cats Glide 38. When I made the video, there is like a desk mat size available for $10. It was app, it was just unreal. Um, but right after I made that video, they like spiked the price of it. And I fucking respect that. If you're like a smallish mouse pad company and your mouse pad just gets suddenly popular because it's cheap, make it more expensive. Yeah, good on them. Next up is the Eve pad, which is unfortunately like a scam pad. I heard that they kind of just close down the company and stop fulfilling orders so uh you can't really get that anymore so going and going the dog shit slash not being produced anymore tier it was a solid control cordura pad when it was out though next up the x-ray pad thor this is like c tier borderline dog shit it has a very speedy and silky coating that lasts for a few weeks to a few months depending on how much you use it but once it's gone the pad is kind of worthless, so I don't recommend it. I, honestly, it's going to go into the dog shit tier. I can't really say it's going to be better than a Glorious Ice long term. Next up, the HyperX Fury S. I feel like this belongs in the B tier. Kind of the same logic as the Gigantis. It's going to be a decent, better than the QCK cloth pad, but I don't recommend it over the $10 Ikea pad or a just actual investment into a good high quality pad like the Saturn for $30. Uh, next up is the eSport Tiger Ubba. Gonna go in the eSport Tiger tier. This is basically the eSport Tiger version of the Mousepad Company Mousepad Surface. And I don't have anything strong to say with one over the other. I think the Ubba is cheaper just for like a standard large mouse pad size, while the mouse pad company is your option if you want like a desk mat. Um, but yeah, they're basically the same pad. Next up is the GameSense Radar, which I just took a look at, is only $20 for the normal black size. And I'm not going to lie, the Radar is not my favorite surface. I do prefer pads that have a bit more speed. But if you're looking for a control pad for $20, the 500 by 500 size, it has good long-term durability, not a affected by humidity not coated but yeah do keep in mind the radar is a seriously slow pad it is very popular in valorant for that reason it has high static friction so if that's what you're looking for it's great but yeah i would say it is closer in speed to the gsr than the gsrse to just give it a slight idea next up is the x-ray pad tray gun i'm not sure if they ever fixed the quality issues on the pad like with the base and the stitching if they did it would probably be s tier um, but I'm going to throw it in the A tier. It's like a solid performing Cordura pad, one of the lowest static friction pads on the market. I just don't think it was really a better experience than the Endgame Gear MPC 450. In terms of price, it is similar, but it's just not a pad that I'm strongly going to recommend. It wasn't X-Ray Pad's highest quality offering. Next up is the G640. This is a pad I hate. Pretty much the same 
as the QCK to me. Just not high quality pads in any regard. They are literally being made for pennies, just like pumped out. It's There's no redeeming qualities to them. People always say I hate on cloth pads. That's clearly not true. Look at like all of the cloth pads in the high tiers. I just hate on cheap mass produced garbage sold by big companies that have not innovated with their mouse pads in years. Like there's no stitch, to, like it's just so bad. Fuck the G640. Apparently they made a G740, which is like a bit thicker. I'll definitely be checking that out, but um, Logitech mouse pads, not a fan. Steel Series mouse pads, not a fan. Pokey made mouse pads though, seal of approval. Wait, fuck, my face cam's blocking it. I, it's a pretty bad pad. It was super thick. I literally recorded a vlog of myself burning it. You can go watch that video if you want. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty bad mouse pad, but made sure to support Pokemane in her merch endeavors. Next up is the Pledge on the Desk. Um, it's just really based. I wouldn't say it's especially good. It is fast. If you put Pledge on any hard surface, it will basically give that pad a extremely fast coating. You can do it on a Sky Pad, a Sarah Pad, your desk. Um, so there's always the ability to pledge your mousing surface. I don't really recommend it. Do it at your own risk, but shout out to Lemon Pledge. Next up is the Zowie GTFX. Uh, maybe A tier sounds about right for it. It could be S tier, but there is that notorious issue where it doesn't lie flat at $35. I just don't think in any world that it's worth it over the Razer Strider. If you're just like in the market for a super heavily textured, like he and mid style clone, go with either the gtfx or the strider i think for most people the strider makes more sense it has slightly better stitched edges slightly better base and the gtfx like that pad hasn't been updated in 15 years i mean for 15 years ago it was a great hybrid pad but nowadays i just don't i don't recommend it super strongly the zowie gsr i feel like personally i'm putting in the c tier just because my experience with it was so muddy. It did not stand up to humidity whatsoever. Like it wasn't even that the pad wore down. It's just any temperature or humidity variations. And it literally feels like you're moving your mouse through mud. But I know some people are into that feeling. Um, I would just recommend like a Jupiter because at least that's going to be at least a bit more consistently muddy than the GSR, which is honestly going to go in the dog shit tier. Next up is the gutsy Aiden mouse pad. I'm going to throw this in the C tier. He got very mad at one of my tier lists. So I do apologize for that because apparently his pads are the same as the inked gaming pad. And I just like, why would you pay more for the inked gaming pad when you can't even choose the design? Like that's the whole point of the inked gaming pad. Like I respect the hustle, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, go, go out and buy the gutsy Aiden mouse pads. I just don't think they're really worth it. Um, but yeah, shout out to gutsy Aiden next up eSport tiger grandmaster, another eSport tiger pad. This is a very interesting one. I think it's a nylon surface. It just has a very light feeling like there's no concern about your mouse sinking in it kind of feels like an air hockey table but it's not going to be rough like a cordura pad if you scratch it it makes a kind of whining sound um if you i feel like that gives you a good idea of the mouse pad yeah gonna end it with that now we have the fanatic focus three i think this could go somewhere in the a tier it's a 20 dollar pad i would not say it is the best control pad on the market um, but it's good in terms of quality from fanatic it was also a waterproof uncoated cloth pad so it's like solid they just didn't make any big enough sizes in my opinion but the pricing on it is pretty good and it's a step above pads like the furious and the gigantus in my opinion now there is a pad that is a step above nothing the glorious triple xl just i mean not a good mouse pad man i don't know how else to put it um glorious got into the peripheral game selling mouse pads and they just sold this giant hunk of cloth that was not consistent but so many people put like years of use on it and i see comments like oh i finally switched off my glorious xl thank you so much i'm like man i wish i could have helped you sooner so if you're watching this video and you see a glorious 3xl on your setup this is an intervention do something about it get a pad a tier or above and come back to this video and if you say glorious 3xl is better you, you just won't it's impossible um now we have the yuki aim high eye uh just, it was a pretty oh yeah wait it's a hien clone i was gonna say i don't know where to put this uh it was basically just an aqua control plus texture with a pour on base um, but it was just in no way really better than the Hien. The texture is a bit more watered down. The sizes weren't as good. It came flat packed and it was like good quality wise, just not really worth buying compared to a Hien. Now there is the boards he pad, which was, it was going to happen. It really was. And then it fell through sadly. Um, what if I told you that the boards pad is actually a pad that is on this list, just going by another name. 
probably wouldn't believe it, but it's the truth. Um, I don't know. A lot of companies have reached out to me, asked me to like make mouse pads with them, and to be like completely honest, keeping it a thousand. Next up is the Pulsar Power Control. I guess we have two of these. Um, they're he and clones, no matter how you spin it. They're not that great. I do think they actually did make an update to them though. Maybe I just need to try the updated version, but the original version I tried was pretty mid. It was kind of similar to the Yuki Aim High Eye, but just a natural rubber base. So if for the price, like if you're buying a Pulsar mouse, you can like bundle it up and that's not bad, but I don't think it's a truly top tier mouse pad. Next up is the Esport Tiger Blaze. And this might be the most shocking part of this video. This mouse pad is actually so good in my opinion that I'm gonna throw it in the S tier, not even in the Esport Tiger tier, um, because the updated Esport Tiger Blaze has one of the best bases and just one of the best Cordura surfaces. It's flat packed, it is $40 I believe, uh, but if you are just looking for an extremely fast, low friction Cordura surface, I would say it's like a step up in terms of quality from the MPC 450, but just with the price difference, I don't know if it's really worth buying over it, but that's why it's in the S tier. The original Blaze was a nightmare it like would not lay flat but they took them over a year to fix it and they really did fix it next up is the yuki aim oni pad this was like another mouse pad release yuki aim did the quality on this one was not that great i gave a ton of them away at board Decon. if anybody watching this video was at board Decon and got one let me know but the pad itself was pretty not that great quality wise very slow um, mainly focused on the design as opposed to the actual performance. Now there's the Esport Tiger Wujang 2. This is a pad that I'm not really a fan of, like all things considered. It's pretty expensive for what is an extremely thin pad with a little film on it. So it is going to perform fast, especially if you have glass skates, it's gonna be like stupidly fast. I don't think the long-term durability is great on it. The designs are pretty cool, and if you like shine your phone on it, it has a rainbow design. But there is the Vancer Ace, which is basically a more premium version of the Wujang's texture. I don't even know where I'm gonna put the Vancer Ace. It's like either B tier or C tier. If you're looking, yeah, I'm gonna go with C tier. Like it's a better quality pad than the Glorious Ice, but it's just not worth $40. I'm just not a fan of the Glorious Ice clone genre style of pad but compared to the Wujang, the Vancer Ace is a lot thicker and it has stitched edges while the Wujang does not. So it's like a higher quality experience. It's a pretty buttery glide feeling, um, but I don't know. It's just not a pad that I've been able to be a big fan of. The Vancer Ice is a more controlled version in my experience. It really depends who you ask though. Some people are like the Ace is faster. Some people think the Ice is faster. I think the Ice is a slightly more textured and more controlled version. I would say that if you're looking for a Shinkai alternative now that it's no longer being produced, the Vancer Ice is your option. I'll say it fits into B tier. I don't know why the Ferdecki pad's there. That thing is pretty terrible. I meant to put that in dog shit. Um, but yeah, not a huge fan of either the Ace or the Ice. And now there's the Long Tang Huo Yun 2 Special Edition, which is Esports Tiger's version of the Rocket Jump Ninja Pad surface. It's just legit the exact same surface, just with the design on it. If you're looking for a mud pad from Esport Tiger, it's your go-to option. It's funny, they basically just have their own version of a lot of other mouse pads. That's what I've come to realize, and I don't really recommend the Long Tang Huo 2 Special Edition very much. Next up is the Rocket Sense Pro, arguably the worst Cordura pad I have tried. Um, this mouse pad literally, like, I would rest my wrist on it, and there would be bumps like bumps of air would come up it, or the surface was not properly adhered to the base um, something it seemed like that affected a lot of units the glide could have been pretty good but it was a super thin pad had that huge issue so did not wind up using it and last but not least the Volhout. Um, this is German YouTuber, The Whale. It is his Hien clone. It is a natural rubber base. Uh, more or less, it's like a black Aqua Control Plus, but it just has a really good feeling to it. It's a 500 by 500 size. It's not worth the price, like importing it to the US, but if you're in Europe, it's definitely like a solid high quality Hien clone. Um, would I recommend it over a Hien? No, but I mean, solid Hien clone. And that is going to be all for the mouse pad tier list as unbelievable 90 mouse pads and yeah this is going to be the final list i'm sure there are a few minor adjustments i would make if i made the tier list again but for the most part i agree with my own opinions um, as always there is no personal preference and like subjectivity that goes into this this was a completely objective analysis of every mouse pad on the market if you enjoyed the tier list do make sure to like and subscribe because like more tier lists in the future. Can't you wait to watch me remake this video in like six or so months? I sure can't.
But yeah, all jokes aside, talking about mouse pads for an entire day straight does take a toll at your sanity. Um, but that's not what I was actually going to say. I was going to say all jokes aside, something else. Oh yeah, all jokes aside, I hope this video helps people out. If you're in the market for a mouse pad, anything A tier or above will really be solid for you. Um, but seal of approval tier, you cannot go wrong with anything in this list. God bless Artisan. God bless America. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and peace. Also, if you made it through the entirety of a nearly 40 minute video on mouse pads, you're a fucking hero. Um, yeah, that's all.